For the gospel lesson this morning, I'm going to let you stay seated. It's a rather long one, so you can follow along as I'm reading from the fifth chapter of the gospel according to St. Mark, beginning at the 21st verse. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. And then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. And a large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she got worse. And when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. And once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him, he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it, and then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. And while Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter's dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue leader, ruler, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wily? The child is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. And at this they were completely astonished. And he gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you like being touched? Now, now that can be a touchy subject, I understand that. But think about it. A new study by Jessica Schrader, she reviewed a, the study in the April issue of Psychology Today, says touch is one of the first senses a human develops. Long before children can talk or understand language, their parents hold them, make them feel better when they're stressed. And consensual test, consensual test, touch, that's when somebody willingly agrees to have physical contact with another. You know, before a stressful job interview or a test, a hug from a loved one can sure help you calm down. And after a challenging day, nothing like a nice hand massage for much needed relaxation. Because you see, today people continually are struggling with stress and anxiety. 
We're, we're obsessed with producing things, meeting goals. And the steady stream of news and information on TV, computers, cell phones, it's enough to exhaust you. And more and more, inactive lifestyles are contributing to the stress so many are feeling. We're not getting enough exercise. And that article in Psychology Today about the power of human touch, well, it talks about the devastating effects on infants if they are deprived of human touch. And that's true for adults. We all long to be touched. You see, loneliness is a complex human emotion. And loneliness is a major problem in aging. It arises when you feel disconnected. It arises when you're here and your family's there, either physically or emotionally, and it can be painful. But it's necessary for you to realize that you're not alone. A lot of people struggle with feelings of loneliness in their lives, and that makes the healing power of the human touch a fascinating subject. And our lesson today is about two touches. They're found in the fifth chapter of Mark we just read. It's about Jesus healing two people with different needs and different backgrounds. And their meetings with Jesus show the deep truths about faith and community. An unnamed woman, she had been suffering for 12 years, sought healing. And she reached out and touched the hem of Jesus' garment as he was passing by her. He hadn't noticed her. She thought that just by touching the hem of his garment, she would be healed. And she was. Instantly, she was healed. And Jesus asked, who touched me? And the woman came forward trembling, and Jesus assured her that her faith had made her well. And you know, it's a reminder that our faith can lead to transformation and restoration, proving that even those on the margin of society, the outcasts, the forgotten, can find healing and acceptance in Jesus. Then there was Jairus, a synagogue leader in Capernaum who held a meaningful position with the Jewish community. He was a respected leader. He oversaw the religious activities at the local synagogue, included worship services and other activities. His deep faith, led him to Jesus for help when his daughter faced a life-threatening illness. And his painful plea to Jesus was, Come, lay your hands on her, so she may be made well and, and live. Well, Mark and Luke wrote in their Gospels that Jesus went home with Jairus and saw a commotion of people crying and wailing loudly. Matthew's version of this story says that the crowd was noisy, making a lot of music. And Jesus informed them, the girl was not dead, just asleep. He told the crowd to go away, and the crowd laughed at him. Mark says Jesus put the crowd outside and went back inside to take the little girl by the hand and say, Little girl, I say to you, get up. It was as simple as a physician taking the pulse of a patient. She got up. And Jesus instructed her parents that the girl should be fed to show that 
She is now alive. She needed food. She was able to eat. But he also told Jairus and his wife not to tell anybody about that. But the Gospel of Matthew says the news went out through all that region. You see, this story of two touches shows how Jesus meets you at your deepest need. Even when it seems impossible, Jesus invites his touch to you, just as you too can care for those around you. You see, a healing touch can move communities. Our actions as a church can affect others. So let's help bring the healing and hope to our community. And it's no laughing matter because churches in action play a vital role in communities. It goes beyond having religious services on Sunday. It involves community outreach. It's support for those in need, whether through food banks or shelter programs or other efforts. Churches contribute to a positive change in a community. And the touch of Jesus does carry deep meaning. Jesus healed people through his touch. His hands became channels of divine love, authority, and power. And when Jesus laid his hands on someone, it was out of his concern for them. He reached out to the broken, to the sick, the weary. He offered them hope. He offered them renewal. He offered them salvation. And that miracle matches our spiritual journey as well. You see, sometimes we experience God's touch in stages. First, we may have an awareness of him. Everyone knows that we have five senses. Everyone knows that each of those senses is carefully and specifically designed so that God can have a doorway to himself through touch. And then in the opening verse on 1 John, which is a letter of love and light and fellowship from John the Apostle, it refers to three of our five senses and says that was that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. And then the Apostle Paul mentioned in 2 Corinthians the sense of smell. And Psalm 34 refers to taste. That's all five senses. It's as if you were designed like a Geiger counter. You're finely tuned to crackle when you get close to God. Like a Geiger counter gets close to an atomic object. His presence and his power is working within you. And when John's emphasis on the sensory experience of meeting Jesus said it's through touch that you enter into fellowship with God, it's Jesus' touch whose willingness is to restore and transform lives. It bridged the gap between humanity and divinity. And whether healing ailments or touching hearts, Jesus demonstrates love and grace and the promise of eternal life. And that will bring joy to your brokenness. And Jesus is willing to restore and transform your life. He wasn't afraid to touch others. A decaying leprosy 
did repulse him. He didn't hesitate to touch and wash the dirty feet of his disciples before the Last Supper in the upper room. He used his hands to show a powerful message of love, of humility, and of acceptance. The psalmist says, when you open your hand, speaking of God, people are satisfied with good things. You open your hands and satisfy the desires of every living thing. My friends, that's the touch of Jesus. Jesus used his hands to show the power that can flow through your hands when you are surrendered to his Holy Spirit. When you extend your hand to touch someone in prayer or to minister them, you're being an instrument of God's love and power. I will always remember, I will always remember visiting someone we thought was dying at the hospital. And I reached over to him and I said, here, take my hand. Take some of my power. He did. He left the hospital. That's not a fake story. You can affect another's life by touch. Your hand becomes a channel of His grace and it becomes comfort and renewal and deliverance to those in need. Your touch with someone else is an expression of your faith when you touch them. You expect something will happen when you touch someone in God's name. And it's a demonstration of the presence of the Holy Spirit within you. And throughout the Bible, you can see the importance of hands in various acts of worship, from the lifting of hands in praise and adoration, for the laying on of hands for commissioning or ordination. The physical touch of hands shows connection to and union with the spiritual grace of God. Don't underestimate the power of your hands. When they are surrendered to the Holy Spirit, your hands can minister to others with love and compassion in your mind and your body, not just the injury or the disease. You should focus on blessings. Even in challenging times, be positive. Have things in your life that will uplift your spirit. Remember, healing is a journey. It's okay to seek professional help. And it's okay to seek help here in your spiritual community. You're not alone because challenges can be painful. But they also offer opportunities for deeper learning and personal growth. And hardships, they're going to help you develop your inner strength. You never knew you had that strength until you faced this problem. Obstacles, they're not barriers. They can be stepping stones. Facing what hurts you can deliver you to discover important truths about yourself and your abilities. Use the surrender prayer so you can let go and ha let God have his way in your life. You know, the surrender prayer is a powerful statement of trust and surrender to God. It helps you find comfort in, during tough times. And when you let go of your worries, your desires, your self-centeredness, and you place everything in God's hands... And you say, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. But remember, that doesn't mean you're giving up. It means you're trusting that God's plan is better than yours. 
So having this mind frame will create space for your healing, your growth, whether through prayer or meditation, or just being with your faith community. The surrender prayer can help you turn difficulties into opportunities, and touching another's life is wonderful. It's called healing. And it's no laughing matter. Amen. We're going to sing one of my favorites as we close today. It's number 631. There is a bomb in Gilead. Please stand as we sing. 